A warm greeting. Today is Sunday, October 27, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. Currently, there are no active tropical cyclones in the Atlantic region. This calm follows a very active period in which we saw the formation of several tropical storms and hurricanes, making this hurricane season more active than usual up to today. However, this temporary lull in cyclonic activity seems to be ending later this week. We will be closely monitoring the southern and central Caribbean and the northeastern Caribbean region for the potential development of one or two tropical cyclones. This video is especially relevant for residents of the Greater Antilles, the Turks and Caicos Islands, the Bahamas, the Yucatan Peninsula, and Central America. Regardless of whether or not we see cyclonic development, expect several rainy days across these areas. The atmospheric instability, which will result in a very rainy period across the Caribbean, Central America, and the Yucatan Peninsula, is due to the favorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation moving over parts of the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic this week. This will generate significant atmospheric instability across the Caribbean Sea and surrounding areas. Indeed, the interaction of several atmospheric phenomena is anticipated. First, the phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation appears to be forming a broad circulation over parts of Central America, known as the Central American Gyre. Additionally, by the end of this week, the remnants of a frontal system will move through the northeastern Caribbean, and an upper-level trough will develop. The combination of these three disturbances could lead to the formation of several low-pressure systems, which we will monitor closely in the Caribbean Sea, especially given the sea surface temperatures in the central, southern, and eastern Caribbean are very warm and above normal. Therefore, we believe conditions will be favorable for the formation of one or two tropical cyclones. In fact, the National Hurricane Center has marked the southwestern and central Caribbean with up to a 40% chance of cyclonic development over the next seven days. This marked area is associated with a low-pressure system anticipated to develop north of Panama and move north-northeast. Some models, like the GFS model, project an unusual northeastward movement of this low-pressure system, which could threaten areas such as Haiti, the Dominican Republic, or even Puerto Rico. While we are typically accustomed to seeing tropical cyclones move from east to west, History has shown that occasionally tropical cyclones develop in the Caribbean and move east or northeast. The most famous case occurred in 1999 with Hurricane Lenny, which developed just northeast of Honduras and had a completely eastward trajectory, eventually affecting the northern Lesser Antilles and passing very close to Puerto Rico. This tropical cyclone even became a Category 4 hurricane as it moved through the northeastern Caribbean. Another example was in 2008 when a tropical cyclone developed east of Nicaragua, initially moving north and affecting the Cayman Islands before taking a northeastward path over central Cuba. Another example from 2008 saw Hurricane Omar forming south of the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico, moving northeast and crossing over some of the northern Lesser Antilles. I highlight these different possibilities because the models still lack consensus on whether the path will be towards Jamaica, Cuba, Haiti, or more eastward towards the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico, or even remain over the Caribbean Sea for an extended period. Thus. There is significant uncertainty regarding the future trajectory of the low-pressure system anticipated to develop in the southwestern Caribbean Sea. Let's look at the latest projections from global models. Starting with the American model, it shows a tropical depression developing north of Panama by Thursday afternoon, moving northeastward between Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, eventually passing very close to or over Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. The model also projects another low-pressure system associated with a frontal system and an upper-level trough developing near the northeastern Caribbean, with cyclonic development potential as it moves westward. You can see how complex this interaction will be, as multiple low-pressure systems surround a broader circulation over much of the Caribbean Sea. The European model also develops a low-pressure system north of Panama by Thursday morning but keeps it quite weak with an elongated circulation, while it shows a tropical storm moving near Jamaica and Cuba. Between Friday and Saturday, it develops a low-pressure system very close to the northeastern Caribbean, which will also interact with the low-pressure system forming in the Caribbean Sea. Therefore, it is definitely a very complex scenario to forecast. The German model also shows this broad circulation with multiple low-pressure systems trying to develop, one near northern Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic and another in the area marked by the National Hurricane Center, south of Jamaica and north of Panama. So, it is evident that we have a lot of uncertainty with this forecast. In complex forecasts like this, we can use ensemble members from the American model and the GFS model. The American model ensemble generally sees the possible development of two tropical cyclones, one north of the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico over the next weekend and another tropical storm or hurricane in the central and southwestern Caribbean. Most members favor a northeastward path, passing near Jamaica, 
Haiti, and Cuba, although some extend as far east as the Dominican Republic or as far west over the Western Caribbean, but definitely, the favored path is northeastward, passing near Jamaica, Haiti, and Cuba. For the low-pressure system developing north-northeast of the Caribbean, it seems it will take a west or west-northwest path, possibly threatening the southern Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands. The European model ensemble also coincides with the development of two low-pressure systems, one north of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic and another east of Nicaragua or south of Jamaica. The European model ensemble members also favor a northeastward path related to the Caribbean low-pressure system, possibly threatening Haiti, Cuba, and Jamaica, while a west-northwest path related to the low-pressure system north of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. This complex interaction of multiple atmospheric disturbances will cause significant rainfall across Central America, especially the Greater Antilles. Here you can see the GFS model's projected accumulated rainfall over the next seven days. For areas in Central America, including eastern Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and Panama, this model projects over 200 to 300 millimeters of rain in the next seven days. The interaction of the frontal system, the trough, and the low-pressure system developing northeast of the Caribbean could result in rainfall accumulations between 100 and 300 millimeters for the northern Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and Haiti, equivalent to 6 to 10 inches. Therefore, if you live in Central America, particularly Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, or the Greater Antilles, including Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, Haiti, Cuba, Jamaica, and the Northern Lesser Antilles, it is very important to stay updated on this forecast's evolution. It is increasingly likely that we will see the development of a low-pressure system and possibly a tropical cyclone by the end of the week in the Caribbean Sea and the Northeastern Caribbean Sea. For now, there is nothing concrete. We are just on alert. Here at Hurricane Info, I will continue recording videos to keep you informed. It is important to check if you are subscribed to my channel. If not, subscribe and click the bell to receive notifications when I upload new videos. With that, I bid you farewell until tomorrow when I will update this forecast. I hope everyone has an excellent start to the work week. Goodbye.